Uh, welcome to this week's class. I uh, wanted to introduce Heather here. Um, she is all the way from Cincinnati, and, uh, and she's going to be presenting today. I'm super excited about hearing her and what she has to say about new construction. You're talking about new construction, right? Right. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And you know what's interesting I've re realized over the years is, and it's because I've moved from one state to another, is that new construction works differently in, in every single state. Um, you've got some states that are hardcore, big conglomerate companies that build, you know, like three, 400 homes at a time. You know, they, they buy like, you know, tons of acreages and build. And then you've got ones that are mama pops that build, you know, 20, 30 homes at a time. So um, I'm curious to see how it works in your neck of the woods and then how things are different from, you know, place to place. So Heather, please take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Nazar. So yeah, kind of high level with the new construction, like Nazar said, there's going to be a whole bunch of different types of builders in your area, and it's going to be important to get to know your market specifically. In Cincinnati, we have the track builders that build hundreds of homes a year, and then there's the semi-custom and then custom high-end homes. So today I want to talk about new construction lead generation. So a little bit on the buyer side and especially focusing on how to get to the listings because we would all love to have listings coming in that are motivated sellers, ready to rock, and they're buying. So they're actually on a timeline, right? So a little bit of introduction on me. Um, I'm licensed in Ohio and Kentucky, I'm right in the Cincinnati suburbs on the Ohio River border. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I've got my Instagram handle on the bottom here. And I love to connect with agents around the country. And that's what I love about this masterclass is that you're all coming from different areas. So please follow me on there. And if you do follow me, send me a message because I'd love to actually connect and talk with you. A little bit about me as far as the statistics go. Um, in 2023, uh, my husband and I, we have a team. And between the two of us, we um, did 22 new construction contracts. And then those were with six different builders and immediate representation. We had six builder rep listing leads come from that. So I'm going to dive into what all of that means and being able to get listings from the builder reps. But I would just love to see in the chat box, um, I think there's stats and there's research to show that if you're actually engaged and commenting and participating, you're going to get more out of this. So I'd love to see in the chat box. And also, if you want to comment, um, how many of you have sold at least one new construction home? If you have, say yes in the chat box. Awesome. See Nazar, Matt, Shandy, Michelle, Ryan. Awesome. I'm super glad that you've all sold some new construction. So you'll have a decent idea of what I'm talking about when we talk about new construction. But um, if the average agent in the country sells eight or nine homes a year um, to be able to do 22 new construction, I think is super special. And it's something that we have really focused on. So I want to share with you some of the benefits. First of all, I want to hear from you guys. What are benefits of selling new construction? I put a couple thoughts on here. Don't have brutal inspections. The house isn't falling apart. I see Sophia, Bobby, Jessica, you've all sold new construction. Awesome. Do you guys want to pipe in in the chat box? Benefits of new construction. You're not on multiple offers. I don't know if you guys are seeing this still, but especially during 2020 and like the COVID market, there were multiple offers on that $300,000 to $400,000 price point in our market. And this was a way to not get outbid doing the multiple escalation clauses and things like that. Um, realtor incentives. Um, Matt, you said less calls after closing. Absolutely. <laughs> You get to see what's behind the walls from the very beginning. Um, a lot of builders are offering a builder paid interest rate buy down. So when rates were in the high sevens, builders in our area were buying the rate down for the buyers to get them into the fives. So if your clients are saying, no, I can't buy right now because I literally can't afford to do that high of an interest rate because they go over their debt to income, those rate buy downs could help make it more possible for them to actually be able to buy. And then one of the big benefits I loved was upgrading is a lot of times if they're buying a new construction home, there's a chance that that's going to be their second home, which means they have another house to sell. And we all love to get listings and people buying. Uh, Tim, you said no emotional seller connected to the home. Absolutely. It's just business for the builders, right? 
So with that being said, is there's all of these benefits. One more point I'll say too, is knowing your different builders, they have uh, incentives for realtors. So one of the big builders, they do the tract homes that you can, you can semi custom, but they do hundreds of homes a year. They will pay a $750 flight voucher and they'll give you a thousand dollar Ritz Carlton gift card for every two sales that you do in the time frame that you need. And another builder that we work with regularly, they do an annual trip that they pay flights and the hotel accommodations or cruise, and you get to go all paid. So you get paid your 3% commission, plus maybe you got a listing out of it and you get trips. So there's a lot of different benefits and in leading into, okay, that's great. So how do I get listings out of it? And how do I, I get more business in new construction? So I want you to picture if you have a, a builder in your mind or someone that you wanna work with, these builder reps are sitting in an office. They usually have their scheduled office hours and they're waiting for walk-ins to come in the door or they're waiting for internet leads. So these big builders have all this lead system going online and then the reps are gonna receive these listing, or the, sorry, receive the buyer leads. And if that person comes in and they don't have a realtor, there's an opportunity for you to be involved with the buy and with a listing. So there's a lot of different scenarios. Sometimes people come in and they already have a realtor and that's totally fine. If they don't, that builder rep can introduce you. So it's important that you are the builder rep's favorite. If they love you and trust you, they will recommend you. So if you're feeding them business, if you've sent them two or three deals in the last couple of months, they're gonna be top of mind. And when someone comes in that doesn't have a realtor and they need a recommendation, you will come to the top of their mind. And in the chat box, I just want you guys to comment. If you say yes, <laughs> how many of you would love to have a motivated seller that's raising their hand, they're ready to write a contract on a new construction home, they need to upgrade or downsize? I would say absolutely yes, we love those seller leads. So a couple of perspectives on this is if they are building a bigger home and they have a condo or a smaller house to sell, those are usually great listings because they're at the lower price point where there's a huge, huge, huge need for those listings. And if they're downsizing from a bigger home, that's a big house for you to be able to list. So to start off with a couple of tips is you've got to do your research. So first of all, you want to find partners um, of the builder reps who are on the leaderboards and that sell a decent amount of houses each year. Now, you don't have to go after necessarily the top producer because they probably have a lot of people they're working with, but find someone in the middle and find someone that matches your personality. And I always recommend finding two different reps per builder because personalities are all different and you need to match those up with your clients. But reason number one, I would say, is if you find someone that's up on the leaderboards, up doing a lot of production, they're number one, gonna be able to service your clients that you bring to them and do an exceptional job and create a great client experience for your people. And reason number two is that they're more likely to have leads to share with you as well. The other part of doing your research is to get familiar with new construction. If you want the builder reps to recommend you and pull you in on deals and be happy with you, you've got to get familiar with knowing what they offer. So somehow uh, some builders, they have market homes that are ready to purchase. They're moving ready. They're done. And then most builders have the option to build from scratch. So if you're familiar with that process and have done your research about the basics of their communities, then you're gonna be an asset in those new construction consultations. And we're gonna talk more later about how to win over the, the reps, but just being familiar enough, you don't have to know everything. You just need to know enough to be dangerous and be able to get the, the, your foot in the door. So uh, knowing the game, the market homes versus to be built and the basics of the product. Again, you don't have to know everything. The builder reps specialize in their product. But you have to know, okay, if you're looking, your buyer's looking in this city, you got to know, okay, there's these two different builders at their price point that might work. And then you can make the introductions, the builder reps really lead it, and you're just an asset there to support the buyers through the process. So how specifically do we earn the referrals? It's a great concept that you want to get listing leads, you want to get pulled in on deals with these buyer or the builder reps. Um, but how do you actually demonstrate value? So I want to hear from you guys if you want to pipe in a little bit. How do you provide value to builder reps? How do you lead gen with them?
I'll just keep going, but I'd love to hear from you guys. I think I, I can chime in a little bit here. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, I, one of the big things that we've tried to do more recently, and I think I might be stealing a little bit from you, sorry, Heather, but we've tried really sitting down with the builder reps and having a conversation with them to build rapport and just listen, get them talking and figure out like what their um, positive experience, pain points, you know, without being nosy and asking for names, but say like, what goes well, what can we do to help you uh, when we're sitting in these meetings, when we're doing the job site visits uh, and what should we avoid doing? What drives you nuts? And if you can build that open relationship of like, okay, I've been able to express myself to this person, build that connection, and they're going to be a positive asset to me in this in the sales process, then they're far more likely to feel positive towards you, whether it's the buy side or the sale side, and therefore, ideally, send you more business. Yep, definitely. Awesome. So I'm going to dive right into it. And I do want to keep you guys engaged, keep commenting. So a couple of ideas that Brandon, my husband and I have done to get to all these deals that we did this year was to go fishing with your reps. So go out and actually be proactive. If your builder rep is sitting in their office, but they can schedule an open house for you to host that's in the same community. And that gets out on the MLS, it sinks out to Zillow and realtor.com. Some organic traffic comes in, hits you up at the open house you are sitting there and you get to start the conversation, introducing them to this market home and to the new construction idea. And then you can introduce them to the builder. And there's a way immediately for you to be connected with a buyer who's looking to purchase and likely has a listing to sell. So that's one example. We're going to dive into that a little bit more. Um, another way to win their business and referrals is to just bring them contracts. So when you have your own contracts that are out shopping around, introduce them to the concept of this new construction and those builder reps are going to love you if you've brought them say six new deals in the last couple of months they're going to be highly incentivized to take care of you you're going to become one of their top realtors and they're going to do extra things for you to help loop you into deals help you have a great experience and then send you those listing referrals so be a resource to them to your builder reps as well and help build their business you're a benefit and an asset to them because number one, you can help them overcome the contingency to sell that the clients are going to have. And then number two is having um, connections for short-term or mid-term rental properties. So oftentimes people that are going to, that are going to build, they have to get their home sold first, right? And sometimes before the, the builder will even start the building process, those people have to sell their house. So there's this six to eight month process sometimes where people are going to be homeless and if you have a lender who owns a short-term rental and you can help fill them with a high paying month to month contract, your lender's gonna be happy, that builder rep's gonna be happy because you're able to get their home sold and get the new house process started. And you're able to leverage all these different relationships to keep the process going. Heather, what, what percentage of the these new construction people that you connect with are like the more national builders, like the D.O. Hortons of the world compared to the, the smaller ones? Yeah, so I don't remember the exact stats for us, but I think maybe like 10 of the contracts were with Fisher Homes and Fisher builds hundreds of homes a year. So a lot of these are, um, they do a ton of business, yeah. I, think I can give you the stats there. Of the 22, it looks like 14 were with Fisher and three were with Dries and those are kind of the more national companies in our area. So, I mean, I guess the reason I ask is because if, if you have, if you're dealing with somebody that is a new, a big builder, they usually have their own sales force. They usually will, we're going to, are going to list their own properties on the, on their MLS if they use the MLS as a, as a form of marketing. And, uh, and so like, you know, I wonder how you get into those opportunities where you can list. Cause I know some of the smaller builders, you could actually get them to, to use you to list one of their properties, right? They might not list all eight or 10 that they have available. They might list one with you. Mm -hmm. just to give them more exposure. And so I'm wondering what tactics you guys have used. And, and I don't know if the big builders will have that opportunity, right? So right. any thoughts on that? Yeah, so that's a really good question. I would say that's, that's a whole nother subject of trying to be like the listing agent for the builder specifically. Um, so the, this, the kind of this focus of today is getting just regular resale listings from builder reps that have clients who have a contingency to sell or want to and need to. Um, so Nazar, if you want to do a whole nother class on getting the actual listings for the builders, that would be a great one for sure. Well, so let's talk about that, Heather. I mean, I, and you, you've mentioned it a couple of times already, but how do you, 
how do you make it to where you're you're del delivering enough value to that uh, the the rep there at, at the builder so that you can be the person that they would loop in that has a contingent buyer? Mm -hmm. We're gonna dive into that. Sorry, give me one second to this next slide. I don't think anybody here has you know a problem with you know, selling new construction or they acknowledge the, the, the benefits of it. I'm just wondering like what else we can do to be able to build more opportunities in, you know, in either marketing for them so that we can get more people there or find ways to be able to create, you know, where, I mean, you know, I don't know what builder would ever say, Hey, you don't have, you don't have a, a, a representative. I've got an agent that can help you represent you and your, you know, cause they don't do that. Cause they're, they're going to save money if they don't pay out a buyer's agent. Right. Yeah. So Nazar, I'm going to chime in there a little bit. We actually see the opposite. A lot of these deals, we do get both sides on because their marketing budgets on these larger companies like Fisher and Dries in our area, they have that allocated for marketing. So the sales reps don't care. They really just want to get somebody through the finish line. So if we can help be a process of that, help them get the signatures on the purchase and help officiate the whole sales process, whether it's contingent to sale or not, that can be a huge value add. And if you're their number one go-to, I would suggest a third of our new construction business is from that. It's from what? Uh, a rep saying, hey, help me get this through the finish line. Yeah, so they actually loop us into the deal instead of trying mm -hmm. to cut us out. So I think that's part of um, doing your research on the builders and the builder reps, because if you know what they're incentivized to do and how they're paid. So like mm -hmm. Brandon was saying, some of the builders, it's literally part of their marketing budget. So whether there's a realtor involved or not, it doesn't change anything from the builder's perspective and from those builder reps. However, there are some of the builder reps where if a realtor is involved, they get paid less. So those ones are not the best ones to try and partner up with if you're trying to increase your business. Mm. Yeah, I've had clients before where I've sold them a house and that, that rep has told my client behind my back, hey, the next thing you want to buy in this community, if you come without your agent, we'll save you money. Yeah, those are mm -hmm. not the good partners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if you can find, like we're saying, like with Fisher Homes, they're not incentivized to cut us out at all. And if they can actually help loop us into some of the deals, and we'll talk more about this in a second, but say there's a client who's shopping resale and new construction, but they don't have an agent, like they want to consider the other options, that Fisher rep can pull us in to help be a resource to the client, knowing that they're ultimately going to lean toward new construction. But that helps us become part of the buyer process rather than trying to cut us out and just persuade the client to use them directly. So yeah, good question. You just, you've got to get familiar with the builders and how they're paid. And sometimes it's when you're sitting down with these reps and asking them questions about how you can build their business, they might want to talk about their money and they might not, but I always say, you know, if, if a realtor's involved, is it going to decrease your compensation? And if they say, Oh no, it's not at all. Then, you know, that might be a good person to partner with. Whereas the other hand, you're going to have to make sure and follow the due process to make sure you don't get cut out of deals. Yeah. I think one thing noteworthy too, though, is the builders that aren't super realtor friendly, like don't discount those. Cause a lot of other realtors do and just go and say, Hey, listen, I know your comp model. I know, if somebody comes in that you do better, if I'm not involved, I'm not asking to be involved, but if they have a home to sell, let me help you get, get you paid. Cause th those are ones that don't have very many realtors being nice to them. You know what I mean? So go butter those guys up and get the listing. Right. Definitely. That's a really good point, Matt. And again, so there's multiple different ways to make the money in the new construction, right? It's building the new homes and listing. It might just be building and it could just be a listing. And we've had that in a lot of scenarios where the builder rep meets with the client and I'm not part of that new construction house at all, but I do get the listing referral. So it, it really is keeping an open mind and really just trying to provide value and build those relationships so that there's multiple different you know, income streams or resources to kind of build that pipeline. And our team just recently started doing open houses for a new subdivision that's open here in our area out on the uh, near Houston. And we actually had four of our agents because they had several inventory homes available. So we actually held have been holding all their inventory homes open. And then we're we're doing the marketing for it too. We're you know running all the social media ads and promoting that. So, you know, we're trying to build the relationship that way with them. Yep, absolutely. Hmm. 
lots of different ways to do it. So kind of wrapping up this open house strategy, the open house has really helped us a lot because um, like we had said that the builder schedules the open house in the MLS, it syncs out to Zillow and realtor.com. And then there's a lot of that walk-in traffic. Now there have been times where people walk into the open house that the agent that we're doing and they do have a realtor, but that's totally fine because if you can tell them a little bit about that builder and about the specific house you're in or the community and then point them to that builder rep, the builder rep is still going to get that business and they're going to remember that you helped be a lead source for that traffic because maybe they don't know they need to schedule an appointment with the builder rep to get started, but they do know how to shop open houses on Zillow. So the next one is to share um, social media posts that the builder rep is making. Now keep in mind, builder, I feel like real estate agents are trying to figure out how to use social media and builder reps frequently are even worse at it than realtors are. So like help educate them, meet with them and talk about what's working for you, what you learned at your last class. Um, but what I found is that clients really like to know about interest rate promotions. So if you can say, hey, the going rates right now are 7%, but the builder can get you in for 5.75 with a, a minimum down payment, that's something worth sharing. Um, if there's huge price reduction, so if it's at a higher price point, you can say, hey, there was just a $50,000 price reduction on this home. You just share that builder reps post and it's a way to get some publicity, but also to make that builder rep feel like you're promoting them and their business. Another thing that has been really interesting is there's a lot more multi-generational floor plans coming out. So there'll like be a nice big footprint and then off like connected to the house, but an extension is like a, a mother-in-law suite or something that they could use for an office space. So having multiple kind of, you know, primary suites on the first floor and upstairs separately is how you can have grandma live with you still, but still have your own space. So promoting some of those, doing video walkthroughs with the builder rep to help promote the floor plans, what they're doing. Um, any other ideas you guys want to share for some ideas for social media posts? I think if you do like the social media posts of, especially if they've got standing inventory mm -hmm. where the home's done, where it looks nicer than, you know, like a construction site. And you share with them everything that, you know, the home has to offer, the community, everything else. And then say, hey, and if you come here and if you mention my name, then you get X. And it could be something that they don't offer, but you offer so that they loop you in, right? If, obviously, if you have that deal worked out with the, the thing, whatever, like some, some builders don't offer appliance packages, some do. You can say, hey, if you use me then you get an extended home warranty, right? A lot of our home warranty companies out there will have a, a new construction, new builder home warranty that piggybacks what the new builders offer. And if they buy through you and you can give them an additional four years of, you know, fit and finish warranty, uh, that might be an incentive enough for them to be able to say, hey, yeah, like I came here because Heather told me about this, you know, this community. And as long as the, that builder is going to be okay with you not being there physically with them, that, that might give you opportunity, so. Right, definitely. You know, one of the things, too, that we have on our books planned with the same builder, which is, um, you know, a pretty big builder in our area, is we have an agreement. We're going to start shooting some videos there at their, uh, you know, their sales office in the homes that are inventory and shoot them with involving the builder in some of those and some interviews and things like that. So trying to build that relationship. Just a thought. Yeah, I love it. Trying to read some of the comments. Rochelle said, how do we get listings from the builder when they're closing out a neighborhood and have standing inventory? Anybody want to share a thought on that? If, the, if there's standing inventory, how to turn those into listings? I think, again, every builder is different. And so being familiar with the ways that they operate is super helpful. I think one thing that we have done is to um, do really good video walkthroughs. So taking a gimbal and have someone follow you and you kind of show it off. So you're actually walking through the house and um, presenting it. And if the builders see that you're hustling out there and promoting their listings already, that's a great way to get tied in. Of, These guys are doing a great job. Why wouldn't I just hire them to sell it for me? One, one little inside trader secret too is as these builders build out neighborhoods, often their financing is in bundles. So they'll be able to fund, say, 20 construction projects at a time in any given, given neighborhood. So they get to the end of that bundle, whether it's the end of a street, usually they chunk it out in streets. The last house or two on a street often will come with a, a price drop or an extra kick 
So if you know about those at the end of a neighborhood build out, at the end of a street, and you can proactively ask about reps like, hey, are there any deals coming up? People love off-market deals or inside knowledge. You know, the secret is the, the social currency. So if you can be on top of some of that, that can help you and them both go find more of those buyers. And hopefully those buyers have listings. Yep, absolutely. All right. We're going to keep moving. Um, so how do I build business relationships again, send them business. If you're actually attracting the business and sending it to them, making it kind of warm slash hot leads to get to a contract, they love that. And then when you're showing interest in their business, just sit down, like schedule a lunch, schedule coffee, go to their office, make it easy on them and just ask them questions. How can I support you? And then actually listen and then collaborate and present ideas. Like what we're doing here is trying to collaborate and figure out how to do better business, right? So a couple of questions that you could ask them is what do your favorite realtors do that you work with? How do we best support you in the process? And what are your pet peeves about working with realtors? A lot of times these builder reps will say, realtors are trying to insert themselves as the experts and they don't know what they're talking about. So don't be an obnoxious realtor, but ask them what their pet peeves are so that you can avoid those things. Um, oftentimes they're gonna say, be part of the pull process. Don't just get the contract and then disappear. Go help take pictures of the clients on site. Help be, the builder be able to get a good review as well as yourself, right? Be there for the whole process. If it's a market home, it's a really quick 30 day turnaround. Um, but just sit down, ask them how you can support. I got to add real quick. Um, yeah. What's also nice to do for them is to buy them some drinks. Not, you know, I'm not saying bring vodka or whatever, but like, you know, bring us a Jamba Juice or Starbucks or something that you know that they like. Um, because a lot of times they're stuck there. They're stuck there for eight hours or however long they're there. They don't even have a chance to be able to like really leave for a minute. So getting them something, just stopping by and, and make it, making that a regular thing that you do, um, bringing them some donuts or, you know, something to eat could really help them, especially if it's like a busy day and they're really stuck there. So, Right. Yeah. Yep. And to that point of figuring out what they need, like bringing their favorite snacks. What I found the builder reps love is to be able to have events planned for them. So if you're active in your real estate community and you are friends with a bunch of the top realtors in the area mm. and an event and bring all your favorite realtor friends and then ask that builder rep who you know is going to provide your friends value um, to share the recent incentives, what's on the market, to educate on new communities, just to provide value to your agent friends. And then it's a win-win. The builder rep gets to be in front of a bunch of top realtors and get more business. And you might worry that those other realtors are going to steal business from you or something. But that's, I think that's a very scarcity mindset of thing, because in reality, the builder rep, if you make that introduction to 10 or 20 other realtors, they're going to remember that really all the business that comes from them could lead back to you in that relationship. So get them in front of people. You could do a home buying seminar and get it out to your sphere. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. So I would also add that competition creates priority. If you're going to send a bunch of business to one rep, they could become complacent. So something that we have found is we had a, a really great realtor that started to get, or not a realtor, a builder rep that started to get a little bit more shallow with us. So if you let them know like, hey, I am going to host another event with this rep because they're introducing me to their sphere, then it does create a little bit more of that competition. So they're going to be more hungry to keep you happy and send, and send you referrals to you know earn your business and support your business as well. So I know we're kind of getting to the end of our half hour. So I just want to give you a couple of quick examples of how um, this has really worked out well for us. So uh, we had been doing a lot of business with the same builder rep, and I think we had probably sent five or six deals in a month. So it was a really good month. And this builder rep uh, sends me an email one day, just randomly that says, hey, clients, please meet Heather Pilcher. She's an awesome realtor in your area. And I replied instantly, set a listing appointment for that next day and secured a listing on the spot. And it was a great two-story home with a finished basement, beautiful landscaping. Uh, great listing, but I was able to get almost, it was it's almost a guaranteed listing because I was prepared for it, but it was such a warm lead and they were motivated that that turned into a listing. And then another example, um, if, if a, a client wants to explore different options, right? Like they are shopping new construction and the, um, the resale options. If 
that builder rep can introduce you and know you're going to keep their best interest in mind. So at the end of the day, the client's going to be happy regardless of what they end up buying. But if they are leaning toward new construction, you're going to bring that business back to that builder rep. So that's a great way of we've had um, the builder reps contact us and say, hey, this buyer shopping. And then if they do have a house to sell, we end up getting looped in on a purchase and a listing, which we absolutely love those. Um, Brandon, do you want to pipe in on one more example? Um, maybe the the builder rep that was asking for advice on. Rental. Yeah, I, I actually I was going to add a little bit to the last slide, Heather, if you don't mind jumping back yeah. on the yeah competition situation. So this is something that we had a rep. It was the one that we were using for almost everything, honestly, for a good six months, doing great. And then, like Heather was saying, the response time kind of slowed down just a little bit, and we weren't getting any reciprocity as far as business goes. Uh, because, and and what we figured is from the sales rep side, if they know that you're going to be loyal to them and continue to use them virtually exclusively then why would they send their nuggets to you? They're going to send it to other agents so they can try and win other agent loyalty. So it's there's a balance between you don't want to make enemies, but you also want to be fair and have an open discussion of, I want to earn your business. I want you to earn my business. I want this partnership to grow. And the idea that you are working with multiple agents and multiple builders and being transparent about that keeps you much more top of mind and keeps a lot sharper. So we've been able to maintain a very, very good relationship with that. But we just kind of had this aha of, you know, you feel too secure in a relationship and you stop investing into it. So that was kind of a, a big finding of us recently this year. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. So again, one, one last example to wrap up on is that Brandon had been having a good relationship with this builder rep and helps them kind of be able to house hack their own property that they built. But the builder rep couldn't loop him in on the deal. Otherwise, he would lose his own discount as an employee. So we didn't get to be part of that purchase, even though Brandon had invested a lot of time on it. However, a couple of weeks later, we get two listing leads that we also were able to represent on the buy side because of how it was set up. So um, it's a really, really healthy way to keep your pipeline full. And we talked about all the benefits of new construction earlier, that the new construction deals are often easier to navigate. You don't have brutal inspections and negotiations back and forth with emotional sellers. Um, so your clients are super happy with a new construction purchase. And on the listing side, we all love more listings. And one final point I'll make is when you're partnered up with builder reps or with lenders, um, in this scenario, a builder rep, um, there's not a referral fee. So you're not paying a 25% referral fee to an agent. Um, and it's just, it's organic business. That's a really good, good relationship. So I just want to open it up. What questions or thoughts do you guys have? What ahas? I think personally, it's it's one of those things where when you have this type of topic and you're like, dang it, I should invest more energy and time into this, but we all don't. Uh, or we're not strategic about it, right? If, if you're not if you're not spending time and strategically looking at this as a lead pillar, because you might say, well, I don't have a buyer that wants to buy in that community. Well, you're right, you may not, but if you do these things like, you know, hold an open house or do these things, and you might go there once and be like, hey, how's it going? Here's a Starbucks and here's this. And they're like, whoa, 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 I don't know who you are. What are you doing here? And if you don't get that warm reception that you that you hoped for, don't let that discourage you from continuing to go back, right? Ask those questions, be curious and go, you know, look at every single floor plan that they have, what's coming to market, you know, like just know every single thing about that community as much as you, you possibly can. And so you can deliver value. And instead of being a shark there, like work with them instead of trying to like, because a lot of times I think a lot of agents have a lot of animosity towards these new construction because we've all been burned where we've had a client go there without us. And because they didn't go to the first time with us, they're like, nope, screw you. We're not paying you anything. We've all had that experience. And so there's a lot of like, you know, this frustrating experience with them. And because we all know that most of those builder reps couldn't make it as a real agent. And so that's why they're working there. And so there's that that mindset that most of us have. <laughs> um, and so there, there's a little bit of frustration, but I think that those relationships can be built. And if it can, it can create those opportunities like, you, you know, Brendan, Heather, you guys are saying. So I appreciate that a lot. So. Yep, absolutely. Any other thoughts? That people have, like I, um, you guys didn't talk about the small builders. 
some of these smaller builders, um, they don't have in-house marketing, in-house stuff, right? They, they might be themselves an agent. And so they're listing their own properties, but beyond that, they don't have that. And so I've been able to secure lots of listings of new construction because I just, you know, I was trying to represent a buyer to buy one of their homes and they saw the value that I brought to the table. And it was just me asking, saying, hey, listen, you know, would you guys be open-minded to listing at least one of your homes with me? And it just gets that foot in the door and it creates that opportunity for you to be able to, to build that relationship with them as well. So, and then same thing with, you know, the, the custom home builder. If you get in it with them early on and they have this home that they're building, you know, that, that could be a great way for you to be able to start proactively doing stuff. And you might get burned, right? You might do work and then nothing pans out. But at the end of the day, just like you're saying, if you put stuff in the universe, you might not get paid from that specific thing, but it'll come around. You'll you'll be, you know, you'll be benefited from from another way or 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 somehow, right? So don't don't think about the you know the exact thing you're doing and how that's going to benefit you immediately from that specific transaction. Definitely. One more tip I'll add to is if you're focusing on a community, like there's one luxury community that you really love the most and you want to become the listing agent there that's preferred, I mean, try to find the buyers. If you're finding six buyers a year for them, they're going to say, dude, like they're not even our listing agent and they're finding all these buyers. So a couple of things you can do is go to the communities, do the videos. I mean, post things on YouTube. When you're posting on Instagram or on the Google, like tag that actual community, because then when buyers or people are shopping on the internet, looking up that community, they're going to see you on repeat and they're going to reach out to you because you're the expert, even if you're not the listing agent technically. And there's some builders right now, they're offering like 4%, 5% broker co-op. And, you know, I remember when, when the market was softened uh, back in 2004, five, six, something like that. I remember this lady, um, she would go and literally sell a whole street to her investors. And that obviously that rep and that, that builder loved her because she literally would just sell all of them. Um, so yeah, there's lots of opportunity to be able to build those, op, um, those connections there. So, all right. And Nazar, I'll add a couple of things. I used to, this is actually uh, convicting to me because I used to put so much effort into building relationships and I just haven't as of late, but yeah, I used to get a ton of referrals from new home builders. Like it's a huge opportunity guys, if you're not leveraging it. Um, so I, a couple of suggestions I'd have is number one, act as if like, just go in there like you are their partner. Um, I used to send Christmas baskets to their whole teams. I would show up with a big tray of Starbucks with just a variety of drinks and be like, not sure what your favorite is. Here you go until you know their favorite, then you bring it. Uh, bring resale stats to their neighborhood, like help them understand what their competition is so they can help have an angle to sell more homes, just bring value to them. Uh, I used to do a standing meeting with uh, some different new home agents where we'd have coffee in the neighborhood of where their home, their community was 30 minutes or an hour before they would start at like 10 a.m. usually. And we would just talk about what am I seeing in the marketplace? What are the objections I'm getting? What are the, how am I ever, and I would literally kind of coach them on how I do resale business to make them better on new homes. Like just, I literally treated them just like a client that you follow up with and I could keep going. There's so many things that you guys can do. Uh, bring your marketing plan, like show them how you market home so they can show. Uh, I used to get contingencies accepted from builders that weren't doing contingencies because they're like, well, if Matt's listing the home, it'll be okay. You know, like, so just so many things you can do to get that extra one or two home sales bolted onto your business this year. Uh, speaking of that, there's, there are built or there are um, companies out there that will do contingent sales, right? Like I know in California, we have that. I don't know if they, I think they're in a couple other states as well. So if you've got a contingent buyer um, that wants to buy in the community and that that builder won't accept a contingent buyer, you can bring someone to the table that will buy their home so that they can then be a non-contingent buyer for that property. And then you can then help them sell that home. So you can, you know, create that type of an opportunity so that you're going to be there, you know, the little saving grace, if you will, so that the buyer gets the property that they want the seller gets to sell a house without having a contingent buyer. And then you get to have a listing opportunity come up because of that. So, all right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for, for you, presenting guys. today. I, I Hopefully this gives you guys that are listening an opportunity to be able to say, you know what, I've done that well in the past, or I have never done this before. And here's an opportunity for me to do that. Or 
if you are currently doing it, maybe some tips that help you level up your game and, and maybe take it to the next uh, next step and, and give them more opportunity to be able to serve them and, and hopefully make it more money. So thank you so much, Heather. You guys have an awesome thank week. You. We'll talk to you guys next Thursday. Bye.